from small seeds, big trees grow. And I think uh, I am just trying to lay the seeds of this, uh, you know, future cooperation here in India. Welcome to Stat News Global. I'm Raman and Dasan Gupta. Our very, very special guest today is um, Air Commodore Terry Van Heron, retired, who, after a very, very distinguished career in the Royal Australian Air Force, is now resi- uh, President of the Asia Pacific Region and the MD of the MD of Australia for Leo Labs. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. So let's start with a very uh, straightforward question. What brings you to Indiana? India, uh, for me, I'm this is actually my fifth trip in the last 18 months, and it's about actually building um, partnerships and uh, a network for uh, hopefully expansion of the Leo Labs uh, global um, enterprise and the things mm-hmm. we want to do. And I think it's in response to uh, India actually stepping forth as a, uh, a space-faring nation and growing a commercial industry. And uh, our real aim, in fact, in Leo Labs as a commercial data provider, we support a lot of companies in the United States all around the world, is to actually hopefully assist in that growth, actually help um, Indian space companies navigate all the issues of operating in low Earth orbit. So look, it was just a, a nice timing, perfect opportunity to um, to build the uh, the bridge, if you like, mm-hmm. between Australia and India in, in space enterprise and also back through to the United States because Leo Labs is a US company. And um, it all starts with a partnership and relationships in business, I think. And then you actually try and look at problems together and, and collaborate and actually uh, and build build enterprise. I remember your labs where you work has something to do with lower orbit satellites and it has something to do with uh, basically communications at that level. Is that what you're trying to sort of work with here or is there a broader agenda to the whole thing? Well, it's a bit broader. So Leo Labs is a uh, company. We actually build and deploy and operate ground-based radars. Mm-hmm. And we have 10 radars in six locations all around the world. Mm-hmm. And we're actually mapping all the resident space objects in low Earth orbit. Well, okay. the satellites, space junk, and debris. But that's a huge task because it is. It's, it's constantly growing. Exactly. It's it's growing at a near exponential rate. Yeah. Um, and of course, that means there's lots of pressure in that environment. And we use that mapping data to provide safety of flight service, like collision avoidance mm-hmm. for commercial and other operators. Um, we're also using it for transparency because we're commercial. We're not a government. Right. We provide this uh, service as a service. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we show what's going on in space. And then the other part of this, I suppose, is that tracking service also uh, assists, you know, with deterrence and in reporting of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And we think those things are all important because they actually lead to a sustainable environment, take the pressure off the growing uh, demands of low Earth orbit. And if we do that well, we're here to support the growth of the entire commercial uh, space industry because they all need transparency, safety, sustainability, and um, security in low Earth orbit to uh, be successful. You know, you, you um, to get off a very, um, well, interesting question in my mind, you know, Whenever you have something, whenever you talk about things like transparency and things like that, what happens when somebody else doesn't want to accept those terms? I mean, and you know who I'm talking about. What happens then? Well, um, the world's changing, actually. Um, the, 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 the tracking systems that we call a public service and provided by typically the US government uh, were controlled uh, services, and there was certainly information that wasn't available in those services. But now, because of the pressure of um, civil, commercial, and military operations all in the same space environment, Mm -hmm. you have to have transparency. You have to actually be able to track everything so you can provide a collision avoidance service. So the US government has actually uh, had a fundamental shift and decided that having commercial um, space surveillance companies like ours uh, doing this role is a very good thing. And in fact, they're also now resourcing the Office of Space Commerce of course, to produce a, um, a commercial tracking system. Mm-hmm. Now, when we say transparency, we're talking about uh, one fact, you can't hide in space. Two, if you're tracking everything, we may not know exactly what it is, but you need to know it's there. And you need to be able to um, provide a collision avoidance warning, if you like, even if it 
it's something that may be classified. But the fundamental, just like driving a car on the road, you need to see all the objects and all the traffic. So this is where transparency is important. And this is, you know, what we're trying to bring to, um, to support the growth of the uh, commercial space industry. Mm -hmm. You mentioned commercial, but obviously you deal with a lot of governments as well. In the process, what exactly are you sort of offering to India? Well, India is uh, basically starting its own space race or joining the space race yes. in a commercial sense. So um, here we we're, we're offer, you know, a, potentially a, a, a Indian government, a public to private enterprise sort of partnership to be part of our network. Um, it goes all the way from a simple amount of data that we might provide to actually provide visibility of what's going on, you know, in different parts of orbit, all the way to um, hopefully, you know, one day might be a Leo Labs India, and we can do that locally. Mm -hmm. um, we're quite aware of the made in India type of uh, requirements, right. and um, and it really comes down to partnerships for us. So, at the moment, Leo Labs uh, came out of the United States. I run the enterprise in Australia. We have an office in Japan. It's a, supporting the Japanese government. I support Australian government. We have offices now starting in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, my vision here is that uh, there should be opportunity here in India for, for this sort of partnership uh, and the commercial services that we offer. And uh, eventually, you know, I'd love to see a Leo Labs India at some point to be part of that enterprise and to be a global enterprise. Mm -hmm. Let me take you to a slightly different kind of a question. You know, having served as the Air and Space Attaché in in Washington, and you mentioned that you have offices in Japan as well, Australia, India, which talks about the Quad. And I, I heard you at the DevSat talking about the Quad. Where does space figure in the Quad? Because that seems more like a naval... Well... Anything else? Yeah, um, I think the Quad is about the free democracies um, joining together in the Indo-Pacific region to promote the, the global order that we all seek and, and prosper from. And I think it um, for space, it's about you know cooperation with commercial space companies in particular, because you know space is hard um, for everyone, anyone that's venturing yeah. into space, and you need a bit of partnership you know, with your own industry and internationally, absolutely, to actually you know mm -hmm. be successful. So the Quad is actually a perfect um, geopolitical arrangement for you know, the United States, Australia, India, and Japan to cooperate at a commercial level which is actually a lot easier than sometimes than a high political or military oh, yes. level. Yeah. Yes. It's just about relationships. What it wants, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you build those relationships over time. Uh, you build enterprise over time. Um, everything's commercial and, uh, you know, it's really about trade. So this is a tremendous opportunity, I think, for the commercial space industry to grow in the quad. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's look at it. We've all got different uh, advantages. I mean, in Australia, we've got a huge territory, not many people. Um so we can host uh, launches, recoveries, and put sensors all around for space domain awareness. And here in India, fantastic population base, very skilled, you know, nation, help with manufacturing. And uh, collectively, we can actually be uh, quite powerful together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned, when I, when I heard you talk about the Quad and things like that, that force to reckon with and things like that, I, um, okay, I won't, won't quote you on from there, but you know, um, people don't quite know what the Quad is, whether it's, you know, whether it's a military grouping or whether it's a, just a, you know, loose grouping of certain countries. How would you define the Quad? Well, I think it's about building um, a, a set of relationships um, at all levels in some respects. But I think the most, uh, in space industry, the most prosperous will be the commercial. And this is because um, we're in the space 3.0 or the new space race, and it is commercial. The the great growth from launches, deployments of satellites, um, is really coming from commercial actors. So, it, I think it's many things, but I think it's it'll great, you know, generate great strength at a commercial level. Um, at other levels, I think you know we have to follow the diplomacy and the politics to of course be successful in business. So we have mm -hmm. to that has to be right. The trade relationships are important as well. And uh, Australia and India, in fact, you know, developing free trade agreement at the moment, which will help that enterprise. And then once we reduce those sort of uh, barriers to working together, um, the Quad should grow strength just through diplomacy, trade, cooperation, technical cooperation, and leveraging each other's strengths, if you like, to be stronger together. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you the last question. What 
would you consider as a, as being a success for your trip here when you go back? What exactly would you be looking at when you say that, okay, I've done this and I think that's what we're looking for? What would you be looking at as a successful? Well, I, every time I come to India and um, and look into the space industry and the space enterprise, I learn something and I understand um, where this business or where this country is going. And then I look for opportunities and I'm following a few of those now. So we've just started uh, support to ISRO's uh, telemetry tracking and satellite control network. They're doing a trial of our data as mm -hmm. they build their system. Well, hopefully that ends up in a partnership where we provide more right. services to ISRO over sure. time. Yeah. Exactly. And we'd love them to be part of our network because we can offer a lot of you know global coverage that comes with this commercial network. In other places, um, it'll be about sport, um, supporting some small uh, industry players here and we're basically starting to fly new satellites in low Earth orbit. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, we talk to everyone mm -hmm. and we're very open in that regard. But guess what? We know that some satellite companies will become very successful and we hopefully we're part of their journey. And this is exactly what happened in the United States because we actually started our journey with SpaceX and started to support their first launches. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. That's interesting. Yeah, and now we support the Starlink system with a collision avoidance service. But that started, they were a startup, we were a startup. And simply, you know, commercial collaboration, uh, understanding their requirements, helping them, you know, with their mission in many respects. And that's what we do, mission support. Um, and guess what? Now they're a major player and we're still supporting them every day. So from small seeds, big trees grow. And I think uh, I am just trying to lay the seeds of this, uh, you know, future cooperation here in India. You know, I, I'd like to wish you all the best. I Honestly, you don't need my good wishes because I think, no way to get it because, you know, I have noticed that from the Indian side, the uh, Australian interest that is being shown is being reciprocated. So I, I, I get the feeling that you really won't have to try very hard, but I'm sure well, you Well, it's two ways too. So, you know, the other thing of talking to SIE India and InSpace and ISRO and all the other uh, space community here is helping them, you know, look for opportunities that mm -hmm. you know, uh, might be in Australia for them. Um, and they might be ground stations. It might be... Um, other little piece, pieces of the enterprise. That's what we're. That's what cooperation is all about. So, if we can grow that together, then yeah, the quad and especially in our region, Australia and India can be very strong together. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining us today, and I look forward to hosting you again sometime. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, that was Air Commodore retired Terry Van Heron retired, who, after a distinguished career in the Royal Australian Air Force, is now president of Asia Pacific for Leo Labs. He was here at the DEFSAT uh, symposium talking about a lot of things and he's spoken to us a lot about Indo-Australian ties and what Leo Labs wants to do in India. We'd like to wish him all the very best. I do hope you enjoyed this session and I look forward to having you again. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.